night, guys. Good Lord, it is after 10 o'clock on a Friday night here in the collapse of global industrial civilization. And it is Friday, March 6, 2020. And uh, this is Collapse Chronicles. I am Sam Mitchell, and this is my little co-pilot, Sancho Panza. After 10 o'clock at night, finally getting around to doing what we do on YouTube, and that is chronicling the collapse of a planet. I have been chronicling the collapse of this house I live in, trying to get it ready to sell. So I'm finally, good God, what has it been? A 14-hour day coming to a close here. And so I can finally get over to where I try to go every Friday, and that's over to mongabay.com. Our friends over at Mongabay, Rhett Butler and the boys and girls out there in San Francisco, who for 20 years have been chronicling the collapse of a planet every week. And uh, let me do a handoff of my margarita with my computer trade-off. Oh man, that's good. Okay. So we're going to start off, as Manga Bay often does, we're going to start off in Brazil. What has been going on this week in Brazil? <clears throat> a bloody January for Brazil's indigenous Kiowa spotlights persecution. Hmm. Attacks on indigenous Kiowa communities and the Brazilian state of Mato Grosso at the start of the year have highlighted a long-running campaign of persecution and growing violence against the group. I bet. Here we have an attack on a house of worship. There you go. And let's see what else. In another town, security guards from private ranches mounted an attack on a community of some 100 families inside their indigenous reserve. Let's see. The state has a homicide rate among indigenous people that is three times the national average. Land conflicts are seen as the key driver for the violence here, where indigenous territory is fast being lost to monoculture plantations and cattle ranches, and is also being subsumed, being subsumed by growing urban areas. Yep, yep, yep. All right, what is the update? I'm going to go down to Australia now. What are the, the latest update on those fires? <clears throat> Fallout. Threatened species in Australia continue to struggle after fires. A devastating bushfire season in Australia has led to significant forest loss in tropical and subtropical regions of Australia's east coast. Um, the uh, burned out areas include significant sections of the Gondwana rainforests of Australia World Heritage Area. Uh, early findings from the Department of Environment indicate the habitat of 648 threatened species in Queensland has been damaged to some extent by the fires. Uh, yep. We will hear more about that. Uh, yes, I, I, I love this. We have the uh, apocalyptic headline of the week. Unsung species, one of Earth's rarest land mammals clings to a hopeful future. Yes, a hopeful future. This is the Humal 
a fleet-footed Patagonian deer. The species once enjoyed broad distribution, but its numbers have been fractured into roughly 100 small disconnected populations. Uh, I see uh, absolutely no reason for hope. Okay. Historically, the deer was diminished by habitat destruction, poachers, livestock competition, and alien predators, especially dogs. More recently, climate change may be playing a role, hammering Patagonian coastal fisheries, causing local villagers to increase hunting pressure on the deer. Yes. Uh, I see all kinds of reasons for hope in that picture. Anyway, let's get back to reality. Um, what's going on in South Korea? This planet eater, uh, this palm oil company vows, South Korea's palm oil company vows zero deforestation in Papua New Guinea palm oil operation. Yeah, South Korean conglomerate POSCO. Yeah, so I wonder, I'm sure PO means palm oil. I don't know what SCO. Palm oil screwing uh, countless what would the O mean? Palm oil screwing countless... Anyway, uh, says it has committed to a policy of no deforestation, no peatland, no exploitation in its palm oil operations in Indonesia's Papua province. Yes, I'm sure. Let's see, the company has already been accused of clearing over a hundred square miles of a rainforest there for an oil palm plantation. They've also been embroiled with disputes with indigenous communities claiming ancestral rights to the land. But now the palm oil conglomerate says it will protect and respect their rights. Yes. It is also pledged to compensate for the deforestation caused by its activities. Mm -hmm. You know, I really do have, well, 99% respect for Manga Bay. I, I just don't understand this aspect of, of Rhett Butler. Uh, Rhett Butler is one of my heroes, don't get me wrong. I just don't get it why he prints th th this, this crap. Th th this is obvious BS. I know it. Sancho Panza knows it. You know it. Rhett Butler knows damn well that everything in that story was a big, fat, corporate greenwashing lie. Why does Manga Bay Keep printing this crap. Anyway, uh, here's a little more back to reality. Mortgaging the future. Report details risks of resource backed loans. Yes, a recent report by the Natural Resources Governance Institute finds that billions of dollars in loans backed by the value of a country's natural resources, may be putting these often developing economies at risk. Hmm, do you think so? And you will not believe this, guys, but China, China is a major player in providing such resource-backed loans, which can help countries finance critical infrastructure projects. Yeah, infrastructure projects 
to get all of the resources out of the country and over to China. Yes. But the terms of these loans are frequently unclear, potentially saddling the borrowing country with untenable debt levels. Hmm. The hasty push to extract resources, you know, by these Chinese uh, planators, and this is all part of the Chinese Belt and Road Initiative, make no mistake what they're talking about here, could also sideline the input of local communities and the hasty push to extract resources may lead, may lead to harming the environment. There you go. The Chinese Belt and Road Initiative may lead to harming the environment. It was one of the guys who's on the, who was it? One of the main guys who's on the board, I'm pretty sure, at Manga Bay, calling the Chinese Belt and Road Initiative, and I agree with this, the single biggest immediate threat to life on planet Earth. Who was that? I'm having a brain fart here, uh, which is exactly what it is. The Chinese Belt and Road Initiative, according to this guy, and I agree with him at this point, it is bigger than climate change. That story, what they're talking about, is a bigger story than climate change. A bigger threat to life on this planet than climate change. Sure as hell, a bigger threat to life on this planet than the coronavirus. All right, guys, you are not going to believe this next story. You know, this is why uh, Manga Bay, their, their penetrating analysis of the state of the planet, you know, why I depend on them for this information, because we never would have known this otherwise. But here it is, right? You heard it on Manga Bay. As hard as this is to believe, East Africa's reefs are being fished at unsustainable rates. Hmm. A new study shows that fish stocks in coral reefs along the coast of East Africa have been fished to worryingly low levels, <clears throat> with 70% of reefs below maximum yield and 38% below sustainable levels. Please give me a break. 100%. 38% my ass. Oh yeah, then uh, these findings are a best case scenario. Computer models suggest stocks could be much lower. Yes. The study's authors call for more careful regulation of fisheries in Africa to allow fish stocks to recover. Contrary to the current push, you know, in Sub-Saharan Africa for expansion of the fisheries sector. Yep, 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 yep. Okay. Here's the, here's the latest, uh, you know, debate on cli fixing the climate by fertilizing the oceans with iron. Since the 1980s, scientists have studied whether adding iron to the oceans might represent a relatively simple and inexpensive solution to climate change. Yes, the idea uh, of this uh, of this Twilight Zone episode would encourage the growth of carbon munching marine phytoplankton that would pull carbon out of the atmosphere on a global scale. But a new study by researchers 
at the Massachusetts Institute of Technology, you know, MIT, suggest, suggest that iron fertilization is unlikely to work. <laughs> there you go! I am so glad we have these geniuses at MIT doing their studies coming up with the brilliant conclusion that dumping iron in the ocean is unlikely to be a solution to climate change. All right. Uh, it, here's an interesting title. Where the logging ends in Indonesian Borneo, the forest clearing begins. A recent study of timber concessions uh, in Borneo found that concessions that were not that were not actively being logged showed higher rates of deforestation than areas that were being actively logged. Huh. Imagine that inactive timber concessions can be vulnerable to illegal forest clearing for farming and industrial agriculture. Activities that result in greater and more permanent forest loss than selective logging. Yes, uh, some of the concessions found to be most vulnerable to deforestation or important habitats for species like the Bornean orangutan and clouded leopard. So there you go. I uh, might as well log it. You know, guys? All right, here we go. Coronavirus outbreak may spur Southeast Asian action on wildlife tracking and uh, trafficking. Yes, initial findings have linked the virus to pangolins, the most trafficked mammal on Earth. Uh, yeah, right. Anyway, enough of that. Uh, all right, here we have a commentary. Poaching and the problem with conservation in Africa. Poaching is a complex topic that cannot be solved by myopic, top-down enforcement approaches. Crime syndicates may be fueling the poaching of elephant and rhino, but they are not the source of the problem. Uh, so what is it? Uh, why across Africa have state-led anti-poaching forces, no matter how well-funded and equipped, have been unable to curtail the high levels of poaching currently deserved, observed? Yes, uh, I wonder why. I cannot imagine. Uh, so what they're telling is hire the local villages to protect the wildlife in Sub-Saharan Africa. That's like hiring Sa Sancho Panza to protect the squirrels in my backyard. All right. Manga Bay's YouTube channel has a new YouTube show called Candid Animal Cam. Yes, looking at camera traps. So Manga Bay has their own YouTube channel. And please go over there and subscribe to that. Uh, well, I didn't need, I had forgotten that there were cloud forests in Mexico until I read about Mexico's forgotten cloud forest. There you go. Where in Mexico, the, ex the expansion of livestock and agriculture 
has increased the vulnerability of Mexico's forgotten cloud forest. Yep, yep, yep. Imagine that. Predators are disproportionately impacted by human land use changes. Yes, new research looking at whether particular types of wildlife are more effective than others by habitat loss determined that predators are the most impacted as was expected. Yes, um, imagine that. The biggest surprise is it is actually the small invertebrates that were found to face the worst impacts of all. There you go. Okay. What is going on up in Canada? The Pan American Silver Mine. The Pan American Silver operates mines in Canada that do not have the consent of local communities and they pollute local water supplies, assertion that the company denies. Yes, in Guatemala, the Canadian mining company granted gained control of a mine where operations had been suspended. Uh, yes, this is for people, you know, buying silver dollars, physical silver to uh, protect themselves when Mad Max gets here. Uh-huh. Yep, 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 yep. Here's this latest update on Indonesian President Joko Widodo. Joko Widodo, his sweeping slate of deregulation to boost investment, affecting laws on fisheries, maritime affairs, and coastal and small island development. Experts have warned that the revisions will hurt small-scale and traditional fishers. Do you think so? Coastal communities will also stand to lose out developers, lose out to developers under zoning changes. Uh-huh. Again, can you say Chinese Belt and Road initiative. All right, we have mystery skin lesions showing up in blue whales in Chile. Blue whales in Chile have been plagued with serious skin lesions, blister-like sores that cover their entire bodies. Following a study that confirmed the presence of persistent organic pollutants in the bodies of blue whales in Chile, a second study is underway to determine the cause of the lesions. Scientists believe the lesions could be linked to commercial salmon farming. You know, this aquaculture, which a uh, big part of the UN sustainability goals about how we're going to feed the planet through uh, the fish farming is what they're talking about. Now, basically, covering blue whales with blisters. So, you can eat your little farmed salmon. All right, we will see. Uh, <laughs> yes, Indonesia's <laughs> Indonesia's point man for palm oil says no more palm oil plantations in Papua. Didn't we just read an article about some big palm oil plantation in Papua? Anyway, 
the Indonesian minister in charge of investments has declared there will be no new permits approved for palm oil plantation in the country's Papua region and that crops such as nutmeg and coffee will instead be prioritized. Yes. Uh... Oh, so, uh, so take a wild guess this guy who is in charge of investments owns several palm oil companies and he's making a rule that nobody that so so he owns several palm oil companies and he is denying permits to let his competition start but to plant nutmeg in instead Activists are skeptical about the minister's U-turn given that the Planet Eater has been the government's most vocal defender of the palm oil industry amid the growing international backlash against the commodity and its environmental damage. Um, they also warn that the move might simply replace large-scale deforestation for palm oil with large-scale deforestation for other crops. Yes. Oh God, here's a new one for the uh, collapse of a planet. The term aquatic wild meat sometimes known as marine bushmeat, refers to the hunting of marine mammals, reptiles, seabirds, sea sharks, and rays. The hunting of marine bushmeat takes place all over the world and has increased in recent years as small-scale fishers have lost access to fish and other marine resources. Good Lord. Uh, marine bushmeat. You will not believe this. Fire in Australia is a symptom of degraded ecosystems. Uh, ancient, ancient Human-induced climate change, meaning by the Aborigines, you, you know, those dream time, living in balance with their mother, noble savages, the Aborigines. Ancient, human-induced climate change in Australia precipitated an ecological catastrophe, turning a rainforest continent into desert. Yes. Uh, we will not get into the myth of the native savage uh, rant here. I noticed I got a comment from this fellow, I think his name was Frank, about, uh, you know, just incensed over the this comment where someone was suggesting that the the ancient indigenous people, you know, such like Native Americans and Aborigines, did not live in harmony with nature. And I told Frank, obviously, he did not realize who he was talking to with that. Uh, um, and I'm going to send the next story out to Maggie May. Maggie, this one's for you. Plastic trash kills half a million hermit crabs on remote islands every year. An estimated 570,000 hermit crabs become trapped and die in plastic containers on the remote Cocos Islands in Henderson Island each year, according to a new study. 
accumulated plastics on beaches could cause a serious decline in hermit crab populations. Yep, 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 imagine that. Um, I, uh, I don't have time to get into this complicated story about biodiversity offsets. Asking the question, do biodiversity offsets work for people or ecosystems? Well, they do work for people, mainly the people, uh, the rich people owning these giant planet and corporations. Do they work for ecosystems? We all know the answer to that question. Um, you will not believe this. The destructive legacy of mining often lingers for communities and ecosystems long after the operating companies leave. Several large multinational mining company corporations have scrubbed their images, touting their commitments to sustainability community development, and action on climate change, but continue to deny accountability for the persistent impacts of mining that took place on their watch. Do you think so? I think Sancho is snoring. Did that, did that one completely bore you to tears? He's now dreaming. Yeah, Sancho, you say, Pop, it's 11 o'clock. It is time to go to bed. Um, more about palm oil in Papua. But we started... Uh, good Lord, guys. I could go on and on. Uh, real quick, just... Let's see, on anniversary of Nunn's murder, Amazon land rights activist at high risk. Do you think so? You will never believe this, but intense human pressure is widespread among terrestrial vertebrates. A new study assessing the cumulative impacts of human activities on wildlife found that the vast majority of terrestrial species are facing intense pressure due to humanity's footprint across the globe. Researchers looked at human pressures across the ranges of over 20,000 terrestrial vertebrates and found that 85% of the animals included in the study are exposed to intense human pressure in at least half of their range. Do you think so? But we started in Brazil. I think we started in Brazil. So let's wrap up in Brazil's Pantanal which is uh, probably the least known of all of the Brazilian ecosystems. Out of control, unprecedented fires ravage Brazil's Pantanal wetlands. Stretching across Brazil, Bolivia, and Paraguay, the Pantanal is the world's largest tropical wetland. The Pantanal is home to many different species of plants and animals, some of them threatened with extinction. Fueled by a toxic combination of searing temperatures and high winds, the Brazilian Pantanal was hit by unprecedented fires that engulfed at least 2.4 million hectares. 
that's about six million acres across the region last fall. Uh, then in January, just two months after the first bout and during what is supposed to be the rainy season, fires erupted once again. Local sources say the fires were primarily the result of burning being set on fire uh, by farmers that spread out of control over an El Nino dried landscape. This is the second time Manga Bay has talked about us being in an El Nino. Yep. Uh, there you go. Six million acres going up in flames. First word I've heard of it here uh, in March. Anyway, guys, it is 11 o'clock at night, and I have to go uh, put on my Craigslist ad for selling this house. The cleaning crew comes tomorrow. The open house is Sunday. So anyway, I've got to wrap up this chronicle of the collapse and get to bed. If you enjoyed what Manga Bay had to tell you about the state of this collapsing planet, please spend a few seconds to thumb up this video. If you did not appreciate what Manga Bay had to say, spend a few seconds and thumb it down. And by all means, subscribe to Collapse Chronicles while you're over here and get out and enjoy the budding springtime 2020 before summer gets here. We can only imagine what that's going to mean. Bye, guys.